In today's video, we're gonna take a pair of these and mount them onto this. Welcome back everyone. This is Joe at Forge where I share my passion for creating, building, and racing high performance vehicles. On this channel, I do a lot of how-to guides on custom fabrication, product reviews from the vendors that support our builds, as well as toss in some behind the scenes vlogs to show you guys what goes on here at Forge Performance. So if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. And if this is the type of content that you are interested in, please consider subscribing. Now let's get on to the video. Welcome back everyone, Joe at Forge here with our second installment of the AMS Alpha 9 Twin Turbo Kit for the Audi R8 and Lamborghini Huracan. So in the first video you saw Greg and me do just a, well, Greg did most of it, but we did a lot of work on the intake manifold and the cooling system and oiling system modifications for the car that need to be done before we can install any of the cool stuff that come with the turbo kit. So like we said in the first video, this car was never intended to be a uh, forced induction from Audi. So we have to add quite a few things to make it so it can do it and do it reliably. So as you saw in the first video, we covered off on installing the reinforcement gasket rings from AMS. We installed a bunch of check valves and everything on the uh, the engine side and on the bottom side of the manifold. And then we also moved over to the cooling system and the oiling system to add ports to get uh, oil and coolant to and from the turbochargers. So in this video, we're gonna continue where we left off. We're gonna mount the turbos to the vehicle and then we're gonna start adding some of the intercooler components and just start working our way from the back of the car to the front of the car. All right, guys, so now we get to mount some of the fun stuff. So the first step here is we're going to put the, uh, the adapters that go onto the factory header. You can see it's on that flex joint here. So you still get free full motion from the engine to the turbo kit, so you don't have to worry about any cracks or anything like that. And then you bolt these two on. And then uh, the next step, we kind of loosely clock them into position, and then we mount the turbochargers themselves. All right, guys, so uh, the turbos come clocked kind of out of the box. There's a lot of uh, adjusting that needs to happen. So turbos are just on there, loosely mounted. We'll have to clock everything, get the, the, the CHRAs lined up and down and uh, put all the fittings on next. So that's what you'll see us do next. And we'll keep chugging along. All right, guys, what you saw us do there was kind of lock everything into place. We got the adapter pipes from the factory header to the turbocharger on both sides clocked in roughly the right position. We clocked the turbochargers into their almost final position to get a better idea. And then we wired in the PTP AMS branded turbo blankets with safety wire. So all nice and tight fit. Everything is fitting up pretty much perfectly with these brackets and everything. So next thing you're gonna see us do is install the plates for the AMS intercoolers. We're gonna add the oil return lines, the cooling lines for the turbocharger. So we're gonna add a lot more lines to the turbos and get that part of the install buttoned up. guys the uh, first step in the process is complete we have the plates that help support the intercoolers and kind of block off some of the heat from the exhaust system from heat saturating 
the uh, intercoolers themselves. So next step, we're gonna lift the car up and start to install the oil drains and cooling lines for the turbos. Right, guys that was a little bit extended but we had a lot of work to do there so you can see now that the uh, cooling lines drain lines are all installed on the turbochargers you can see the importance of all that heat wrap that I had talked about earlier all that stuff kind of comes in close vicinity of the turbos themselves that's why the heat blankets are so important you can see kind of the routing here of how this all goes for the oil lines and the cooling lines that feed around to the return drain of the turbochargers, the feed and return on the uh, turbo system for the cooling lines. These are water-cooled turbos, which for longevity, these things are hard to beat on Garrett. They're some of the best in the business. They'll last forever. And part of that is because they are water-cooled. All right, guys, that was uh, pretty involved on getting all the water and oiling to the turbocharger. So now that that's done, Greg's lowering the car. So the next step is to add all the intercooler water systems to the car. So that's going to be the reservoir that gets installed, the water pump that gets installed, and the associated wiring and mounting of all that. And that's going to be fairly involved. So we're going to kind of reposition everything and show you what has to happen in the engine bay and then up into the fender liner. So we'll, we'll cover all of that next and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, what you saw in that last sequence was Greg mounting all the water to air intercooler components related to the water tank and the water pump. So the water tank and expansion tank mount just behind the passenger side firewall and has a nice bracket that goes around the frame. It's all bolts in there and clamps in with it's rubber isolated. And same thing for the water pump that lives up in the fender well, as you can see. And it is it comes with its own bracketry, its own isolation washers, rubberized washers, and it all bolts in. It's very easy to get to. It's very well thought out. So then now what we have to do is install the intercooler systems in the uh, the main 
feed lines that go from the forward uh, closest to the engine over to the pump. So you saw us kind of test fit everything, make sure that the lines were the proper length. And now Greg is heat wrapping all that stuff as we speak. And then we're gonna put everything back into its finding resting spot. And then we're on to the next step. All right, guys, now that we have those hoses in there, you can kind of get an idea of why we were so impressed with all that heat protection. Because you're running right over the top of the exhaust system and all these hot parts. So you got to make sure you have all that taken care of. And now I can finally get in here and give you guys a little bit of a closer look as to what the, the water tank and expansion tank looks like. It's all well positioned and uh, fitted in there with the nice clamps for all the hoses and the overflow. And then let me walk around here to the, the fender area. And you can get a little bit of a closer look as to how the water pump and all that is located. Like I said before, it's uh, very well thought out. It's all these uh, pre-engineered silicone to fit everything up with all the T's. You'll see where uh, the lines will get connected into there. And uh, that's really about it for this portion of the install. All right, guys, that's pretty much a wrap for the second video in the series. Uh, what we were able to accomplish today was install the turbochargers onto the manifolds, get all the turbos clocked and rotated, get the oil and coolant lines running to and from the turbochargers. And then we also installed a portion of the intercooler system with the expansion tank for the water and the water pump and some of the associated lines. So uh, Greg just has a little bit of uh, minor wiring to do to a few harnesses to make sure that everything's gonna reach after we put the turbo kit in. Uh, we won't really get into too much detail on that, but uh, on the next video, you'll see us start to move around to the front of the car and start to take off the front bumper and mount the heat exchangers and a bunch of other things as we're on our way to completing this build. So until the next time, we'll see you on the next video.